Hi, Flavio. Oh, hey, Brendan. Thanks for coming. Sorry, I'm late for surgical planning conference. Did you uh, make a decision on this case? Yeah, it's actually perfect timing. I'm on my summary slide here. And um, as you can see in the screen there, there are a lot of discharges that are localizing to the left temporal region. So I'm proposing to do a left temporal lobectomy and I'm about to go help out the surgeons do that. What do you think? I, I feel more comfortable asking Dr. Manikski to, to help us out and make sure we've got this right. Oh, he's here. Hello, hello. Yes, nice. Hello, welcome. <laughs> well, I, I really love this really nice phase reversal in the left temporal area. But you know, peak negativity is just one side of the coin. Because actually, in this case, the source is in the frontal lobe. Oh, oh no. dear. Yes, so if you only look at the location of the peak negativity, you can be in the wrong lobe, but you can be on the wrong side as well. We, we well know this phenomenon of false lateralization. So uh, mm. your peak negativity can be also on the wrong side. Hmm. Brandon, I would have taken the wrong lobe. Oh, uh -oh. No. We, I want to understand this better. Can you yeah. explain the physics to us? Sure, my pleasure. So as you well know, the EG comes from the cortex. And then all these neurons generate return current. And this is the essential thing, currents flow. And that's what I would like you to remember that currents flow. Now, you know that the source is in layer four and five of the pyramidal cells. This is a schematic representation. And then you must remember that for the epileptiform discharges, they have a specific distribution of the poles. So negativity is always towards the surface of the cortex and the return current, the positive polarity is always in the opposite direction that is towards the white matter, so deeper. Okay. You know that the cortico-cortical synapses that generate the interictal epileptiform discharges have an asymmetric distribution. Mm -hmm. So the excitatory synapses are closer to the surface of the cortex so here sodium goes in, so the extracellular space will be more negative. That's what you measure with the EG. And due to the return currents, you, you will have the positivity close to the white matter. Now, the inhibitory synapses can also generate epileptiform discharges, but here the synapses are closer to the cell body. Now here chloride goes into the cell, so the extracellular space deep there is positive. And because of the return currents, you have a negativity close to the surface of the cortex. So regardless whether this is an inhibitory or an excit excitatory synapse, the netto effect for the interictal epileptiform discharges is the same. You always have a negativity towards the surface of the cortex and a positivity deep towards the white matter. Mm. But the cortex is, is not flat. We also have sulci. So here I would like to explain you that both the location and the orientation of the cortical generator determines what you can see on the scalp, so the negative and the positive charges. Mm -hmm. So here to the left, you have a cortical generator that has a so-called radial orientation. Mm -hmm. So here, the patch of cortex generating the signal runs in parallel with the surface. So the neurons here are perpendicular to the surface. So the returns current flow in this direction. Due to this, you will have a relatively circumscribed high amplitude negativity. Mm -hmm. And then on the rest of the head, you would have a widely distributed low amplitude positivity. Okay. But fortunately, as I said, the brain uh, has many sulci. So if the source is in a sulcus, then these currents will flow in a direction that is in parallel with the surface. Mm -hmm. This would generate you a negative pole and a positive pole. The less smart guys in the, in the audience perhaps would understand an analogy from uh, the military technology. Oh, this I understand. So, yes. Yeah. Are you familiar with this? This, this is a part RPG, a rocket propelled grenade. So what's going on here? There's a tube and then there is an explosion in this tube. And the consequence is that the grenade leaves the tube in one direction. Mm -hmm. and the exhaust gas leaves in the other direction. Mm -hmm. So intuitively, no exhaust gas, then no grenade either. Just so like the brain. Exactly like the neurons. So the 
Think of the neurons as just RPGs that fire negativity into one direction and positivity into the opposite direction. So if you want to localize um, your source, just look at the negativity and positivity on the scalp and try to think of your source as an RPG. Mm, I like that. Beautiful. Okay, then let's let's try it out, how it works in, in, in the praxis. What you do is you click uh, with your cursor on a, a point in time in the EG, mm -hmm. and then the software will reconstruct you a two-dimensional, three-dimensional uh, image of your negativities and positivities on the scalp. And then um, you have these color codes. So blue symbolizes negativity. So the deeper the nuance of the blue, then the higher the negativity it is. And the red is for positive potentials. Again, deeper uh, the uh, red nuance is, the, the more positivity you have. Mm -hmm. So let's see um, uh, what this radial orientation gives us. So again, the generator is this patch of cortex mm -hmm. with the radial orientation. So you would get this large amplitude circumscribed negativity mm -hmm. surrounded by diffuse low amplitude positivity. So if you spot this, then you know that your phase reversal would work because here the source is just under the peak negativity. Mm -hmm. But if you spot this other voltage distribution where you clearly can see both a negative pole and a positive pole, then you immediately conclude that this is a tangential orientation where the currents flow in parallel with the surface. So again, think of the RPG, grenade here, exhaust gas there. So your RPG must be here uh, in the middle. And can you see these are the isoelectric lines? So they, these connect areas that, that have the, the, the same uh, polarity. So here, where the isoelectric lines are closest to each other, where the gradient is the largest, there is your source. Sandor, is it the radial currents are the most common ones, right? Is that correct? Well, if you only look at it in, in a double banana, then, then you would not even know that this exists. Because, for example, here, if you use a double banana montage, because the uh, neighboring electrodes have similar positivities, you wouldn't even see that there is a positive uh, polarity. So if you just look at it in, in a, a double banana montage, you, you are almost convinced that this is the only thing that exists. But if you use a little bit more extended electrode array, and also if you look at the signals in a common average montage, uh, then you, you will see that this is not that, that rare at all. Gotcha. This is a, a misconception about the, the common average montage that is, is quite often um, uh, vehiculated. And this is a, a quotation from a textbook. And the text says that, OK, let's assume that we induce negativity in the posterior part of the head, nothing anterior. And then if you remontage this in, in a common average montage, then you would get due to the average, you would get some positive potentials that are actually not there. These are some mathematical goals. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem with this is that it's physically impossible because current flow so it's impossible to induce just negativity in the head. You must have positivity. Remember the, the RPG, no exhaust gas, no grenade. That means that we're just not accounting for the positivity in somewhere exactly. that we're not seeing? Okay. Exactly. So if, if you would uh, account for positivities also on the head, you must place somewhere positivities and actually you must pay, uh, place an equal quantity of positivity as negativity. And yeah. if you take that into, into account when, when you calculate the average, then actually you get the real thing. So mm -hmm. this is an unrealistic, this is physically impossible. This is an unrealistic scenario. Got it. And to convince you, let me show you an MEG because magnetoencephalography Mm -hmm. is not biased by this phenomenon of common recording reference electrode that we have in the EEG. Now, um, also color codes, but these uh, color codes show you where the magnetic fields goes into the brain. So blue is the magnetic field going into the brain and mm -hmm. red is the magnetic field coming outside the brain. Mm -hmm. Now, you might remember the right hand rule from your high school physics study, which shows you uh, how the direction of the uh, magnetic field and the electric current are related. So mm -hmm. these are the magnetic fields. And then the thumb shows you the direction of the intracellular flow of the positive charges, which is this one. Mm -hmm. Now, place your bazooka like this. So you expect a negativity here frontally mm -hmm. and then a positivity there uh, mm -hmm. posteriorly. 
And this is exactly what you record. So the mm -hmm. positivity is not just in a random place or not just for, uh, the, uh, the far away point on the head. The positivity is there where the orientation puts it. And if you have this orientation of the source, then you would have the negative here and the positivity there. So if I show you this signal in a common average montage, then you would, uh, you would see that O1, O2 and EZ show the positive deflection exactly mm -hmm. where the positivity must be because again, currents flow. Mm -hmm. Is that convincing? Almost, convincing. almost there. So, uh, you know, um, I, I don't want to be rude, but, but if, uh, when, when I hear this um, statement that, that the positive distractions are just the product of the common average reference, I always think that this is just like claiming that the Earth is flat. This is physically possible. Let's uh, sum up how, how you can use the uh, voltage distributions of negativities and positivities on the head uh, mm -hmm. to localize, to estimate the, the source. Well, the first step is that you, you, you need to realize whether this is a radial orientation or a tangential orientation. Mm -hmm. So if you see a large amplitude circumscribed negativity surrounded by widespread low amplitude positivity, then this is a radial source. So your negative phase reversal works pretty well. Your source is just under the peak negative. Mm -hmm. But if you see a peak negativity and a, a, a peak positivity, so two poles, mm -hmm. then what you do is you try to place your RPG that could generate this voltage distribution. So you connect the peak negativity with the peak positivity. Mm -hmm. And in between, where the isoelectric lines are closest to each other, where the voltage gradient is highest, there's your source. So not under the peak negativity, but, but further away from it. Mm. Mm. So to, to be clear, what, what, what was the case for our uh, first spike that uh, Fabio was about to operate on? Yes, yes. So um, the source was in the orbital frontal area. So mm -hmm. the RPG was, was shooting downwards in a vertical way. And of course you, you have a, a, an anterior temporal negativity, but mm -hmm. if you look at the positivity that was at the top of the head. Mm -hmm. So this, this helps always look at the voltage distribution and that involves both negativities and positivities. Shall mm -hmm. we play with this? Shall, I, shall I show you some examples? Yes. Do it. So here you can see three uh, different montages. Uh, you have a longitudinal bipolar, you have a transversal bipolar, and you have a common average. Mm -hmm. And here you can see the source and the two and three dimensional voltage map. Okay. So where, you ca where can you see the phase reversal? Look here. Yeah, it's, it looks like it's around F7, T7 there. Exactly, yeah. so left, very nice left temporal. Now, can you see the positivity in the longitudinal bipolar montage? I can't. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the, the common average, you can see a, a widely distributed low amplitude positivity. And then the best is to look at the voltage maps. And again, here is the circumscribed high amplitude negativity surrounded by widely distributed uh, low amplitude positivity. So you know that in this case, your phase reversal works very well your source is just here under peak negativity. Now mm -hmm. remember this, and then we, we go to the next one. Mm -hmm. So here again, you see the, the phase reversal and just, that's just what, what you've asked Fabio. Mm -hmm. So you can see, still see the phase reversal in S3. Mm -hmm. You can't really see the positivity if you use a, a, a bipolar montage. Mm -hmm. But if you use a common average montage, you can see that besides this peak negativity in F3, you have a very mm -hmm. nice peak positivity in P3. Mm -hmm. And this is the corresponding voltage map with the negative pole and the positive pole. So immediately you realize that your source is not under your negative phase reversal, but in between the negative pole and the positive pole here. Mm -hmm. So um, you, you can also guess this actually from a common average uh, montage, but it's much easier and more intuitive looking at, at, at the voltage maps. And you know, this is a one-click thing on, on all digital EGs, so people should use this. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Well, you know, this is not just for localization. It's also for identifying spikes. So I remember in, in one of, of your previous EG talks, you mentioned the six criteria of the IFCN. Uh, for mm -hmm. identifying the spike. Number mm -hmm. six is exactly this voltage distribution. Mm -hmm. So if you see a voltage distribution corresponding either to this radial or tangential orientation, 
mm -hmm. you know that the source is from the brain. Okay. Like we've learned this. And now these irregular uh, voltage distributions tell you immediately that this is an artifact. So it's impossible mm -hmm. uh, that uh, a source in the brain generates such a voltage distribution. Mm -hmm. Now, here you can see the same in a two dimensional voltage map. So again, very nicely distributed voltage map. So this comes from the brain, but this irregular one, this does not come from the brain. This is mm -hmm. artifact. I think that not using voltage maps for assessing the distribution of the EG field is like not using cars for transportation nowadays. <laughs> Yeah, which is colder. Yeah, right. it's much colder to go in that kind of vehicle. Well, this is this is really wonderful. Um, I think you saved saved Fabio's patient.